Good morning. What are you, Kipper? I'm still high from the beautiful services we had on Yom Kippur. Hundreds of hundreds of people, so many people, and so much spirit and ruach and singing. And now on to Sukkot, the next holiday of Zman Subchatena, the time of joy. But I want to share with you a story that really brings home going from Ne'ila into Sukkot. So a little while ago, there was a conference of Chabad rabbis in Israel, and the speaker was a guy named Rabbi Yoav Arkish. And he got up and he said, told him a story about this young boy whose parents were divorced and he had no one to go with him to Shul. And he ended up wanting to go to Shul. He was 10 years old for Yom Kippur. But he said, how am I going to find a seat on Yom Kippur? The Shul's full and everyone has their seats. So he came up with an idea. Yom Kippur morning, he was going to come early in the morning before anyone comes and find a seat. He comes into the Shul and lo and behold, he finds out that there's really no seats. All the seats were bought by members and they had names on it. Sad, he looks around and he peeks and finally in the corner, in the right hand corner, all the way in the back, he finds a little broken table without a chair. He says, perfect. He runs through the whole building, he finds a chair, he goes to the broken table, he sits down, and he says, I'm going to be set. A little while comes, 10, 20, 30 minutes later, and someone shows up and taps him on the back. He looks back and there's this big man and the guy says, excuse me, you're in my seat. And he looks back and says, how could it be? There was no cheer here, it's a broken table. The guy says, you're in my seat. A second and a third time and he just leaves the show the kid. He has no choice, he gets up and he walks outside and he's dejected. Is there no room in shul for a 10 year old boy? Is there no place where a 10 year old boy could pray? Sadly and crying, he looks up to heaven and he says, oh God almighty God, I tried so much to pray but there's no room for me in the shul. They don't have a place for me, for this broken heart. And Rabbi Yoa finishes the story. He says, you know how I know the story? Because this young 10 year old was me. A little while after my mother ended up going to New York, this was 1991, he says, and she came to visit the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Without saying anything, she asked for a blessing for her family. And the Rebbe gave her a dollar and said, this is for your son. She didn't mention me, he said, but when she came back to Israel, she gave her son the dollar. And she says, you might not have a place in the temple. You might not have a seat in the shul. But in the Rebbe's heart, you have a place. And that changed the trajectory of his life. He ended up becoming a lecturer and a speaker all over Israel and the world, inspiring thousands of people. And the truth is that so many people feel that they might not belong or have a seat in shul at the Jewish table, if they have a broken heart, if they're going through a challenge, through a struggle, and they feel like they're alone, but every single Jew has a place in shul. Every single Jew has a place in God's heart, at God's table. And the Rebbe taught us as Chabad rabbis that every single person has to be welcomed and included. If they could afford to pay or not, if they could reserve a seat or not, they have a place in shul. And that's the power of sukkahs. We go into a sukkah and what do we do? Everyone sits equally in the sukkah. There's space for everyone. Doesn't make a difference what level you are. And what do we do? We celebrate. We hug each other. We embrace each other. The rabbis tell us that the sukkah is like God giving us a hug and an embrace after the holidays, after all the prayers. He says, I love you guys. I love you all. You are all mine. You know, Yair Eisenbacher is a paratrooper. And on October 7th, he woke up in the morning to go to Shul for Simchas Torah and he heard the alarms and he knew things would never be the same. He got on his gear, he got his rifle and he ran south to Kfar, Kfar near Yitzchak. And he came to Kfar near Yitzchak and there he was and he fought the entire day. He said it was surreal, this most beautiful little kibbutz, stunning greenery, but yet at the same point, it was a place full of blood and terror. He fought bravely with the terrorists, and at 10.30 at night, they killed the last terrorist, and they knew there was one home there where there were many Jews hiding, and they ran into the home, but they were all fortified <laughs> in, in, <clears throat> in their fortified room with a special door, and no one could get in, and the people were scared that it was really terrorists. So, 
Yair says we screamed Shema Yisrael, but they still didn't believe us. He said, maybe the terrorists know it, so we screamed every verse we knew. And then finally, they opened the door when they realized we were Jews. And he says, I came in. And he says, all I wanted to do is hug everyone in that room. I ran over to them, I hugged them like if I rescued my own children, my own spouse, my own family. And I cried and cried and cried. And he says, ever since then, all I want to do is run around the entire world. And every Jew I meet, I want to hug them. I want to embrace them. They're my brothers. They're my sisters. That's the story of Sukkot. God hugs us and we hug each other. We get seven days and then Simchat Torah, and Shemit Atzeret, which is nine days to celebrate unity and love and Am Yisrael. There is nothing greater than that. And that's what we have to celebrate. And that's who we are. Just yesterday, the New York Times had the headline that they had, they found secret documents that Hamas was in, in, in touch with Iran and with Hezbollah to do a, a unified attack, to literally do something on the scale of 9-11 for Israel, which would have been even 10 times greater than what they did, 10 times worse. And why did they do it? earlier because they said clearly in the documents they saw the disunity of the people they saw that we were fighting Hashem saved us in a certain sense from a greater calamity and now we see when we're going up north and we see what we're finding that it could have been much worse but how could we not understand that we need to hug each other we need to embrace each other we need to make sure that every 10 year old with a broken heart or every 10 year old who is having a challenge every adult who feels like a 10 year old and needs to belong everyone should have a place in our homes in our shoals in our sukkahs because that's how we will have victory through unity through love through Am Yisrael. and that is the essence of Sukkot so my friends it's amazing to be here the day after this remarkable Yom Kippur and to have seen so many Jews from different backgrounds, from different communities, Sephardi, Ashkenazi, educated, less educated, wealthy, less wealthy, left, right, middle, sitting together. If you watch the video I put on Facebook earlier and saying Shema Yisrael, there's nothing like that. S singing the march and Am Yisrael Chai, it's just amazing. We love you all. We want to hug you over Sukkot. Join us for something so we can celebrate together.